Okay, joining us from the University of North Carolina is head coach Hubert Davis, along with student athletes R.J. Davis and Armando Boycott, Baycock. I ask um, if you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll send the mic over to you. Please limit it to one question at a time. Uh, we're going to start with opening remarks from Coach Davis. Okay, we'll open the floor right here in the front. MWSJS, Armando, assuming this is the last time you're going to see DJ Burns, how are how can you characterize the difficulty of facing him one on one? I mean, all season early on, I mean, I thought I did a good job. And I think just going into this game, I just allowed him to catch the ball where he really wanted to. And when he gets it at that point, it's really tough to guard him. To the left. Uh, yeah, Jeremiah Holloway inside Carolina. Uh, Hubert, it seemed at the uh, end of the first half, you guys were able to kind of find a rhythm, take the lead going into halftime. Uh, wasn't quite in that same rhythm, I guess, to start the, the second. Was there anything that you kind of observed from North Carolina State for what they were able to do uh, to kind of, uh, I guess, limit the offensive production? No, I, I mean, we just, we just couldn't guard them tonight. I mean, they shot, was it 54%, 55% from the field. That's just not going to get it done. We've... Um, in regards to us, we've talked about all year that it starts with defense and rebounding and taking care of the basketball. And the first thing that I always mention is defense. And so for us, and you know, statistically throughout the ACC, we've been number one in terms of all the metrics defensively, um, allowing a team, any team, to shoot 55% for a game. That's just not going to work. And so it's um, you know, a credit that we stayed in the game, but it was just we just didn't – um, from a defensive standpoint, we weren't able to guard them one on one, whether it's on the post, uh, isolations out on the wing. Um, didn't play the type of defense that you have to have in order to win games like this. Second row. Adam Smith with Inside Carolina. Uh, RJ, this was a goal for you guys to, to come here and win the tournament. I mean, could you just sort of assess your level of disappointment of, of not being able to get it done um, tonight in the championship? Um, <clears throat> I mean, definitely disappointed. Uh, you know, got to the championship game and came up short. Um, and didn't play our best basketball today. Um, so, I mean, I know that was one of our goals going to the season, uh, but we just came up short. But um, Coach Davis always talks about our response and um, and how we're going to respond when we get knocked down. So going into the March Madness, we're going to have to, uh, you know, prepare, come together as a group, and uh, fix the mistakes that we made tonight. Middle on the end. Uh, Michael Coe, WCHL, Chapelboro.com. This one's for everyone. What do you think you can learn from this experience going into the NCAA tournament next week? I mean, it's really nothing to learn. We know what we need to do, and... As long as we get back to the game plans and what the coaches have told us to done, we'll be fine. Do you want to answer the question, Coach? What was the question again? What do you think you can learn uh, from this experience going into next week? I don't know if there's anything that we can learn. I mean, it's, you know, I've said it before, you know, for us to be the best that we can be, especially in games like this, you're just going to have to defend, rebound, and take care of the basketball. And so um, we'll go back to work um, when we get back home and prepare and practice. And wherever they send us and whomever we play, we'll, we'll be prepared and, and be prepared to uh, be the best that we can be when we get out there on the floor next week. In the back in the middle. Andrew Jones, Target Illustrated. This is for RJ and Armando. Did you guys feel out of sync collectively, offensively in the second half? And with that, RJ, did you kind of feel like you had to do a lot more than maybe usual to sort of keep you guys going or keep you in the game? Um, I felt like our pace wasn't up to par. I mean, we didn't play really with a quick, um, quick pace and uh, get down and transition and get easy baskets for us. Um, I kind of just felt like we played into the, the slow pace of their defense. Um, and that's what's done. One thing that's been working for us all year was just our quick pace, our transition offense, and um, finding the rim. I think we, uh, the first half, we took a, a lot of open, or oh, a lot of threes rather than um, getting the ball down low to Mondo or just penetrating from the guards itself. So, um, 
I mean, that's, that's what I saw from today from our offensive standpoint, but it was more so of a defensive game and defensive mistakes that we made um, and just guarding your man one-on-one -on -one rather than offense. First row on the end. Daniel Wilson, Inside Pack Sports. Coach, uh, one of the big question marks heading into this game for NC State was the fatigue factor. They were just they were playing their fifth game in five nights. Coming off an overtime win at that, uh, for them to come out as hot as they did, for lack of better phrasing, do you feel like there's a bit of complacency on your team's end to sort of allow that? No, I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, those are your words, my words, I mean your words, but um, I, I think I think too much is made out of five games in five days. You have a chance to play in this tournament. You have a chance to win a championship. It does. Us growing up, we we played three games in one day, you know. And so, um, getting an opportunity to play at this level in this tournament for a championship, it doesn't matter how many overtimes, how many games you play in a row. Um, we knew that. Um, that they would play with great energy, and, and um, they did from the start and throughout the entire game. Last question on the end. <clears throat> yeah, Kip Coons, Press Box View. All right, Hubert, in the, in the first half, it looked like your plan was to double uh, Burns, uh, especially when he caught the ball close to the lane. Did that change, or was it just a matter of where he was catching it? No, we, uh, it changed throughout the entire game, not just the first half. There were times where we did double him. There were times that we didn't. We didn't want to give him a steady diet of not doubling or a steady diet of, of us uh, doubling him down low in the post. Um, every time that you play him, it, you know, there's always, um, you know, proposes a, a question because he's such a great passer. I mean, his ability to be able to score in the paint, he can do that. But he's also a gifted and elite passer, which allows – the other guys from the perimeter to be able to shoot the ball from the outside. And so we try to mix things up to keep them uh, off balance. And um, we've had success against them in the past, and we didn't have success against them tonight. Okay, thank you. Please note the locker room will be open for another 15 minutes.